Hello, church family. I hope you're doing well tonight. And uh, I want to share a little bit with you. Um, and once again, you're saying, why are we videoing again tonight? I know. Uh, instead of doing the live, it's business meeting night. So for business meeting nights, we've said so that we can do the business without it being live. Uh, I'll record for you each week when we're doing business meetings. So tonight's business meeting. So I'm going to share with you what we'll share after we finish the business meeting. My hope is that we will take about 30 minutes for our business meeting and then have the other 30 minutes to, uh, to deal with some Bible study stuff. And so uh, kind of share those ideas with you. Um, maybe it won't go 30 minutes here because we won't have interaction, but uh, I do want to share with you uh, some of the things that are on my heart and things that will be shared tonight uh, in, with, with our, our church family. A few announcements first, and that is that we only have four Sunday nights left this year where we're going to be having uh, Sunday night activities. This Sunday we're going to have that, our Thanksgiving meal as a church family. Looking forward to that, and uh, hope you're going to be here for that, and that you've purchased tickets, and, and uh, we'll be able to, to participate. We're looking forward to that. It's going to be a great time of fellowship. And then the, the last Sunday night of November and the first Sunday night of December, we are going to have uh, adult Sunday school training So for our adult classes. I say, I say, I'm telling you that because you are adults who are watching. I know that. We're also going to have uh, training for our children's leaders. And uh, so um, Regina has one of our state um, trainers coming in from Mississippi Baptist Convention to come uh, and train. Uh, Angie Boydson and so Angie's going to come in and she's going to train our children's ministry workers and I think we've got about 18 folks signed up to be part of that training so I think that's great uh, and then Tanner will have some training one of those nights as well with his team for them to, to do some visioning and, and thinking about the future and where they want to go uh, and then we're going to have two nights part one and part two of some Sunday school training for, uh, for all of our adult leaders and potential leaders. And so we're going to be looking at this book, Breathing Life into Sunday School, and uh, looking at some of the concepts and ideas that are in there. And so we're going to invite anybody uh, that wants to come and be part of that to come um, on those Sunday nights at 6 o'clock to be a part of that Sunday School training. Um, we we got to have training. We need to have training for our Sunday School leaders. Some of the stuff that's in this book that talks about the training is that, you know, Sunday school is so very important, number one. That's, that's, that's one reason why we need to have training is because of the importance of the Sunday school. But there was a study done um, in the entire state of Georgia uh, in regard to their growing churches and their top 50 growing churches, 98% of their top 50 fastest growing churches in the state provided training for their Sunday school leaders. Training is important. You want your doctors to be well trained, don't you? You want um, you want your educators to be well trained, don't you? You want someone who comes and works on your house or a building. You want them to be well trained so that they know how to install lights. They know how to fix the plumbing problems. You want them well trained. Well, you know what? We're teaching God's word. Our Sunday school teachers are teaching the word of God. We definitely want them trained. We want them uh, knowing how to best share God's Word. And certainly, God's Word hasn't changed, but methods can continue to change. We can continue to find creative ways uh, to learn and, and to, to grow. So we're going to spend some of that time training. Um, <clears throat> what I want to say about the training, I was trying to look for the quote uh, that, I, that I like, but it says, we have an obligation provide ongoing training to every person that we ask to serve in a leadership role. If we can't do this, we have no business asking them to serve because we will be doing them and the ministry an injustice. Isn't that true? I think that's exactly true. Um, you know, we th this is God's word. It needs to be handled rightly, accurately. And so we need to be ready to, to train our people our leaders to do it so very well and to encourage them as well. Uh, so Sunday School is really our largest leadership uh, ministry that we have. Certainly more people come to worship, but in regard to us gathering with as many volunteers 
from volunteers at preschool to children to youth to adults to senior adults. Uh, that's a lot of leaders it takes to run our every week Sunday school ministry and therefore we want to train and provide them um, the what they need to, to serve us well in that role. And so we're looking forward to that. You are invited to be a part of that. We won't be doing uh, the video of it um, as far as live. We, we probably will record it and Therefore, if someone can't make it, they can uh, connect with us. But we want you, to, we want folks to be there in person. And so both the leaders can be there and Sunday school members can be there just to say, hey, I want to know more about how to have, have a healthy Sunday school so I can help my, my teacher, my leader, to even be on their, on their team of helping us point our, our Sunday school in the right direction and working to breathe life into our Sunday school classes. So uh, this Sunday... Thanksgiving meal. The next two Sunday nights will be training part one and part two and then the, the second Sunday night of December, December the 12th, we will have our last Sunday night activity of the year which will be our Celebrate Christmas musical. So that's going to be a great time. So I hope you're planning to come and be part of the Celebrate Christmas musical. We'll also provide that for you online as well. And then in January, sometime in the middle of January, we will restart our winter quarter of Sunday night activities at that point in time. Um, <clears throat> if you're watching this, it means you are uh, in some way, shape, or form technologically capable of, uh, of watching and, and getting on. It means you are online. probably means you have an email address. You probably have seen that today we sent out the vision as a PDF file uh, to make sure that it would work because uh, here's what's happening. Uh, the, the November vision that we, we mailed out earlier this month, it's the vision is now our only item that we mail out in bulk. Technology has made it so that we can use email, we can use text, uh, more so than we were ever, ever able to before, and so we're grateful for that opportunity. Um, and so we were able, if you look at our proposed budget, uh, we were able to significantly reduce our postage budget over the last few years, uh, but even this year, even more so. But with our most recent power surge that we had at the church, we lost some equipment, we lost some files, we lost some software. We're getting most of that back. And certainly, um, you'll remember we, we had some internet problems for a little while with that, just, just for, a, I think, a Sunday and a Wednesday, maybe. Um, and so right now, we can't, we don't have the software program loaded back up and ready to be able to do bulk mailing anymore. Me, it's impossible for us without without that technology right now. So we were trying to figure out how are we going to get the December copy of the vision to you and, uh, and any other future copies until we could possibly figure out how to get everything back on track with our, our, our uh, computer technology guys that have come in to help us. Um, so today we said, you know what, let's test out sending our November vision out by mail, and it worked. Many of you wrote back and said, hey, got it. I'm able to see it on my phone. I'm able to see it on my computer. So going forward, this is what we're going to do. We're going to move to this system to get you a copy of the vision. Uh, for, for all of us that have emails, you're going to get that copy on your computer. And uh, we're going to email you the file just like we did today. It's going to allow you to immediately access the vision at home. You're not going to have to wait for it in the mail. As soon as we have it ready, you're going to get it. It's not going to be damaged by the mail. I know sometimes we hear that uh, those little pieces of paper get torn up sometimes in the in the mailing system, and so you won't have that happen. Um, and then you'll not only get it by email, we will set out hard copies in the church, in the fellowship hall, in the sanctuary areas, the entry points of the sanctuary, so that you can pick up a hard copy as well and have that uh, with you at home. So you can pick that up on a Wednesday or on a Sunday, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. Um, and then we will mail a hard cap copy to those uh, of our church family who are homebound um, or any members that do not have an email address. That way everybody still gets the vision, everybody has it available online and also has access to a hard copy. Just not everybody will get it in their mailbox. But the other benefit of this is that by moving to this delivery system, we will not have to uh, continue to purchase the software year by year by year um, and the permit, which will save us a little more than $1,000 every year that's going to be able to be used for additional missions and ministries. And so you're going to get the vision. You're going to be able to get a hard copy. 
you're going to be able to get the email copy. It's just going to be a little delivered to you slightly differently. So, all right. Um, what I want to talk to us tonight in God's Word is just a little bit about evaluation, just, just briefly about evaluation. It's kind of what we talked about on Sunday night, and I wanted to continue that on Wednesday night. Um, but let me share with you the Great Commission. You know the Great Commission. Um, in Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20, Jesus call, had called his disciples together. They gathered with him, and he says, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the very end of the age. And so this great commission that we have, um, we're called to be about that as a church family. Is that our purpose? Yes. Are we fulfilling our purpose and that's where we have to evaluate uh, we have to evaluate are we accomplishing that goal if we find out we're not we need to course correct and get back on track um, and we need to keep brainstorming what are some new ways that we can um, be disciple makers uh, as a church family and so on Sunday night uh, we discussed uh, the last two months of our discipleship classes and the diverse the, the, the diverse options we've tried to provide and we really had a really good discussion. But I, I want to say a little bit more about that on here um, and tell you a, a little bit about my hopes and my desires as we think forward into 2022. And one of the things is we need to determine what does God tell us to do? And in regard to what he's telling us to do, so here's he's telling us to do these things. And if we see a place where we're not doing those things, there's a gap between what he says we should do and what we are doing, those gaps need to be shortened, right? We want to say, well, if there's a big gap between God, what God says to do and what we're doing, we need to bring that together. If he says, go and make disciples, go out and evangelize, share your faith with others, and we say, you know what, we're not doing a good job with that, then we need to say, how do we, how do we decrease the gap there? so that we can train our people in evangelism, so that we can give people conversation starters, we can give people the ability to say, I want to not have a gap between what God's word says and what I'm doing. I want those things to be right in line together. And so we want to be thinking about service. Um, service, I, I brought one other thing. Where's the other sheet I have? Service. So one of the things that we know that God's done is he has called all of us to serve. The Bible tells us that God's called us to serve. He's given us a spiritual gift to be used for the common good of our church family, of our brothers and sisters. He's given us talents and abilities to be used for his kingdom purposes. If we're going to be good stewards of our gifts, our abilities, our talents, our spiritual gifts, our time, our, our money, our resources, all of those things, we need to be able to serve. We're called to serve. God wants us serving. So we have designed a, a little survey called Answering the Call to Serve My Church Family. We're going to get this into everybody's hand, a hard copy, and again, by the computer. Uh, and it basically gives all the different places that you can serve in our church family. As a Sunday school leader, you can say, hey, I, I'm, I would be willing. All, all we're asking you to do is to let us know where you would be willing to serve. Where are you willing to serve? As a Sunday school leader, in our music ministry, in our preschool or children ministry options, in our youth ministry, or in one of our adult ministry teams, such as men's ministry or women's ministry, a greeter, um, the hospitality team, uh, the bereavement team, perhaps the photography team or social media team, one of our techs that helps up in our sound booth in, in the balcony, um, or in our missions areas. So all of these are different ways that you can serve with us. And there's even one that says other. There's the administrative committees that you can be a part of as well. And in other it just says what ministry would you like to see started and you would be willing to lead or participate in. And so you could let us know how do you want to serve your church family? How can, how is God calling you specifically to serve your church family? Be prayerful about that. And so, um, 
if we're going to go and make disciples, we've got to be servants that will be willing to do just what he's said. Teaching them to obey, to observe everything I've commanded you. It means we need to know God's word, we need to spend time in God's word, and we need to serve as God's word tells us so that we can uh, do exactly what he's called us to do as disciple makers. Um, so that's service. The other is outreach. Um, again, I may have said it on here before, but one of our deacons asked, you know, would our community notice if we were not here? And that's a great question, isn't it? To say, you know what, we live in all sorts of different areas all over our county. And we were all over this county and other places. <clears throat> but God's called us to worship right here at Poplar Springs Drive Baptist Church at this location now we are his church wherever we meet together but when we come to this location we're saying this is where we've chosen to gather and I think because we've chosen to gather here it's also where we are called to be salt and light we're called to be salt and light while we're here as we go out into his harvest field we are also called to be salt and light but I think even this community where we've chosen to plant ourselves to worship is a place where we need to be on mission and be about outreach. So we want to say that's a gap that maybe we need to work on closing as well. So let's be thinking about and praying about how we close those gaps in service and in outreach. What are your hopes? What are your dreams? What are your visions for our church's future? What do you believe we're called to do as a church family in Meridian, Mississippi? How are we going to be able to get there? I'd love to hear from you. And so uh, Send me an email. Send me a text. You could give me a phone call. Come sit down in my office and say, here's what I think where we need to be going. And uh, we're going to be talking about that tonight during our Wednesday night. I think about our church as uh, a church situated in a great location, kind of like Paul in Antioch. That, that Antioch became the mission-sending church for Paul and for Barnabas. Um, so as they went out to do the missionary journeys. We are an educational city. We have um, a community college and we have the state branch, uh, Mississippi State University. So we are an educational city. We can work with college students and let them come to know Christ and then send them back out. We are a city with military uh, connections and we've got a lot of people that come into our city for service with the military and its service arms. Um, and the support services that are needed for it. And so as they come in, can we minister to them and then send them back out as missionaries wherever they go? Uh, we've got various cultures who live in and work in Meridian and Lauderdale County. Are we ministering to them and letting them come to know Jesus Christ? And then as they take the gospel back to their countries or let their families, as they go back into their uh if they go back to their home to do a visit or to see family, that they're bringing the gospel as well. We've got people who are connected to the arts. Meridian is growing in its arts community. And so how can we engage the people in the arts community and send out, uh, again, the gospel through different media of, uh, and employment of the different arts uh, avenues, whatever that art form might be. And we've got tourism that's growing here. We're a hub city where we've got different interstates and major highways that come here. We're in a great location to be a sending church, a church like Antioch that's on mission with Christ, on mission for God, a missional church that's about the mission of God, completing the Great Commission. So I hope we'll be praying about how God would have us do that. So join me in praying uh, for that for our future. And with that, we'll, we'll end there. And uh, I hope you're still reading God's Word. I hope you're committed to reading God's Word each day, that you are spending time in prayer. And we want to uh, remember to use the prayer list that comes to you each week. I don't have a prayer list on my desk. Uh, but that you would take the prayer list each week and that you would pray through the names on the one side and that you would pray through the spiritual needs on the other side. So let's spend that, uh, that use that for our prayer time as well. But now let me pray for us and we will conclude. Father, we thank you for just this, again, technology that allows us to do so much and still stay connected. And we're grateful that you let us stay connected to our church family in this way. 
We pray that you would help us to know how to evaluate, to, to make corrections, and to brainstorm new ways that we can be the missional church that you've called us to be. You've placed us by your, uh, your power, your knowledge, your sovereign plan. You've placed us right here on Poplar Springs Drive to be a great witness for you to be like Antioch and be a sending church. So help us to know how we can close those gaps to be more obedient to your word and help us to know how we can be on mission to all these different areas that you have put in our sphere of life uh, and uh, of our church family. Help us to be a lighthouse right here where you've placed us. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Well, it's been a joy to share with you tonight and I pray that you have a great rest of the night. Uh, I love you and uh, I hope to see you soon. All right. Bye-bye.